are excited to see you tonight. If you don't know where you are, you have stumbled your way into the fun and exciting world of the tile and stone industry. I don't know, fun and exciting may be an exaggeration, but if you don't know me, my name is Craig and we're here every Tuesday night. And when I say we, I mean my good friend and partner from New York City. He's a little bit rock and roll. I'm a little bit country. It is a John Tedesco. How are you this morning? Are you ready to talk tile, John? <laughs> yeah, good morning to you as well. <laughs> oh, is it morning? Oh, it's not morning. It's <laughs> Hey, what's up, Craig? Yeah, great day in New York. Beautiful, nice, hot day today. Uh, raining yesterday, going to rain tomorrow. So today was a good one. But uh, busy day in New York City, a lot going on. A lot going on. You are right. It is. Yeah. It is happening. It is the kind of the end of the summer. We uh, we officially closed the summer out last uh, a couple of weeks ago because you know when you're used to going to the beach and everything, uh, the Labor Day is the end of summer. Even though my wife keeps reminding me, summer doesn't end until the solstice, which is like September twentieth. This um, is so true. So it's coming up, and uh, yeah, and even after you know, even after the September. 20th this could be some nice uh nice hot days coming so there can be there can be there can be but uh no matter what season the ceramic tile industry is hopping uh if we got people um dan yes let's get it on let's get this rolling dan is always good for some uh some great comments um if you don't know where you are you're watching me either live on YouTube, Twitter, and even TikTok. And we already got a question on TikTok about, do you know about floor tile? Midnight in the morning? Absolutely, we do. Stay tuned. Let me know what you want to know about floor tile. But we're live right now, and we're taking right. your questions live. So if you put a question in the comments, I'll see them on my screen here. And then also here. And John, I don't know what he does. He just sits back. Because it is the happy hour, he just drinks more than I do. This is true. Just poured myself a little whiskey, so cheers to you. Cheers. I, my wife brought me home an iced coffee. Mm. Well, that's so $12, $12. I'm drinking right iced coffees. Yeah. Well, you did mention we're on a bunch of platforms live right now. Hello, Facebook land, X land, uh, LinkedIn land, and YouTube land. So this is John Tedisco, co-host with Craig Cahoon on the Tile Happy Hour. Welcome, everybody, to our show. We are on episode 26 or 7, Craig. I don't know. It is episode 27. Episode 27, and we have covered a lot of subjects about the ceramic tile industry in 27 episodes we've had a lot of epic interviews with industry professionals um uh, it, it, that start with anything from setting materials we had ron nash from laticrete um last week we had a, a terribly interesting conversation about sustainability with dan from florum and it is just industry full of excitement and my wife doesn't understand it but i've been doing this a really long time and i just love talking about this stuff you know what i it's always you know everyone should have something they're an expert in it could be paper clips whatever it is right. just own it right and uh, we live right. and breathe we live and breathe it both of us have been in the industry for a long time and you know, we've been in different roles within the industry, so it it uh, our our lives kind of cross path at um, at our current employer at a phenomenal uh, company, and we, Craig. So Craig and I, you may not know this, uh, everybody, but you know we have a reason to talk to each other during the week uh, by phone, typically about yeah. business technical things. But every time we would get on the phone, we wouldn't talk football or baseball we're just talking tile and 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 but it's always a half hour conversation it's and just intriguing like i'd ask him a question a technical question i'd ask him a question um why do people do this or you know how do you solve this problem and he would ask me a question often a product question because he would get um inquiries from clients look who have a technical question yeah. or concern and and, but sometimes you need to understand the product a little more to give the answer. And so I may have that knowledge. So we kind of just chatted and uh, we decided to, um, we just turned the camera on. Let's, let's chat live. 
<laughs> exactly. So that's where we're at it's Tuesday, September 12th. And we are, I'm in New York. And where are you, Craig? I am in the wonderful South in Raleigh, North Carolina. And let me know where you're watching from and whatever platform you're watching on. Um, just drop in the comments on TikTok yeah. here. I'm watching. There's a bunch of comments going by, and I promise I'm going to get to them. Um, and uh, yeah, drop. Let us know where you're watching from, no matter where you yeah. are on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok. Let us know where you're watching from. We have viewers all over the world, actually. Yeah. And um, it's been fun. We're getting a lot of comments. We do get a lot of. Um, comments or qu questions i should say after the fact and some of them would just respond you know back directly someone has a technical question a product question so we've been getting so it's been just rewarding just for that part of the show we we see that there are a lot of people that watch that don't comment when we're live and maybe they'll reach out to us later or they they don't even watch it live they're watching it on a replay uh, and um, they'll get back to us. So it's and our... we always answer our comments, no matter what we're coming from. This is true. We, we want to make sure. Um, I actually had somebody reach out after last week from Australia. We got. I don't know why. I've, we're we're big in Australia. I think the down under. I think. You know, I have a feeling if like you go to Australia, you're going to be surrounded by people when you get off the plane. Probably. Probably. It's going to be a red carpet. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, 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 I'm piling up questions here on TikTok. So, John, before we even get into it, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Right. And this was from midnight in the morning. Sounds like they possibly got a uh, installation going on. And the uh, first question is, is wood look tile dead? So you want my opinion? I want, I want your opinion. Is wood look tile out of style? It's it peaked a long time ago and okay. it, and it's dropped significantly, but it depends because tile is not something you do very often. So let's say there's a couple that saw wood grain porcelain, as I call it, and, and eight years ago and they're like, wow, I really like that. And it's now eight years later and they're finally getting to do their renovation and they why shouldn't they still like it? You know, so right. so it's still popular for that reason. There was a time when wood grain porcelains, it was a stigma, like why are you using a fake material? Use real wood. We're yeah. way beyond that. It's been absolutely. proven in the industry, right? Would you agree with that? I would absolutely agree with that. And I, I think wood look porcelain held on longer than I expected it to. It yeah. peaked, but it didn't drop off. I think it just kind of evened out. And I think it's flattened a little bit. I, I and well, you know sales better than I do. So, I, I but I also know our catalog still has wood look on in our catalog, and and I, I'm assuming if it's still there, we're still selling it. Well, the reason we're still selling it is look when wood wood look porcelains came out, it was six inches by twenty four inches. That was it. Mm -hmm. And that I, would be uh, the next question: Is longer better? Um, 40, 40 inches. 36 48 in my opinion i like the longer planks better and if yeah. you've got a qualified installer that you can do a thin gauge plank and some of those come in you know eight foot lengths and that gives you a really nice big look if you've got a big room that looks a lot like wood well you know to answer that question it's really twofold because there's a there's an aesthetic answer and there's a technical answer so the aesthetic question yeah the longer planks are really nice yeah i haven't we don't even have a six by 24 i you know that's like a real basic mm -hmm. basic product at like a entry level home center product so uh that really doesn't look nice um in my opinion now the reason the wood porcelains are still popular is because the technology keeps evolving. And we've talked about in pre previous episodes where the inkjet printing, the technology. So they're able to make things look even nicer and nicer. Absolutely, so it's keeping, yeah. it's keeping that alive. And then they're able to make them longer. 48 is like a really good size, I feel. And the reason I said it was twofold is, you know, longer is really cool looking, but you have to have two things. You have to have, three things really a quality product that's not warped or, or yep. not warped much right and then you need the proper substrate 
And then the third thing you need is what, Craig? Qualified installer. This is true. And that leads us right in to the first part of what we're going to talk about tonight. So tonight, um, this is the, the show I've been waiting for. This is all about the installation. John didn't have to prepare anything for tonight because uh, I was napping. Just all be, I was napping all day, and I just woke up. He's for just going to be in the room. And so, uh, the first thing about an installation, and you just touched on that, and that's substrate prep. And got a question on TikTok about prepping substrate. Do you need a dustless vacuum? Always recommended. So when you're prepping a substrate, if you're demoing old tile out. It is recommended you use a HEPA vac or have HEPA filters and a negative air machine. There's some really nasty stuff that uh, is released when you're demoing that stuff. And you don't want that in your lungs. Make sure you got a proper uh, respirator. And that is not even the substrate prep I wanted to talk about. The substrate prep that I wanted to talk about is how flat your substrate is. And... And well, let's back up a second. What is what is a substrate? Yeah, well, that, that is a great question because um, maybe not everybody knows about that. But you install tile on something, and it's uh, it's going to be the floor, the wall, or the ceiling. And what you're putting that? <laughs> Craig, wait, hold on a second. I have to stop you. Okay, sure. <laughs> There's such bad typos on this. It says substrate, <laughs> so it's not even substrate and preparation. <laughs> I know I need a if if, if there's anybody employ, out there yeah we did not employ the AI technology today <laughs> if there's anybody out there that needs a job proofreading my stuff I need an assistant here we'll, we'll get rid of that for a second I need an assistant that can spell and, um sorry, sorry about that said, what substrate. is what is stress what is such straight by the way Sus substrate I, okay. I thought you were asking a serious question. The substrate is what you're going to install your tile on. Yeah, no, no, okay. <laughs> what what I typed there was just to see if you were paying attention, John. Yeah. And you were. Good well, job. well, if everyone noticed, he just said I was not involved in this at all before. So now you see what happens when I'm not involved. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what happens when you didn't look through the uh, yeah, that I, what, exactly. what I put up here. But regardless. Okay. Um, your tile installation starts with what you're going to put your tile on. And that is critical. If you have a bumpy or a, a substrate, then um, your tile is going to be bumpy. It's not going to be, it, it's not going to look good because right. whatever's going on on the floor or the wall or the ceiling is going to translate through that tile. And a lot of times, and you'll hear painters say this, it is, uh, it's all in the preparation and it is so true with tile work. And, um, John, I know you've been in the showroom. You've seen some do it yourselfers. You've probably seen some clients. Um, what is the, probably the biggest misnomer about what they're putting their, um, tile on. And do you think that they walk into it thinking no matter what it is, it'll be okay. Yeah, I've I've throughout the years had, you know, there are many applicant many projects where the substrate is in such a state where you it's not a do it yourself thing, you know. So yeah. if if you walk into a really good prepared floor, mm -hmm. then it's more suitable for a do it yourself or to do something, and then you have to pick the type of product, like we just talked about six inch by 24 inch wood look porcelains. And we talked about, you know, eight by 48 inch porcelains. So, um, if you're not experienced at installing, you really need to pick the product that is going to give you the least challenges. So the smaller product, the, you know, um, the better substrate yeah. uh, is, is you're setting yourself up for success because you do need more skill. The, the, the bigger the tiles, the closer you want to get the grout joint. Um, do you want to do a pattern? Do you want to just, you know, do a brick pattern or, or a third, a third, a third? Or if you want to do a diagonal herringbone, you know, no, right. you can't, you know, don't. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I've no to answer your question. People, they just think 
it's like what you see on TV, like in, you know, in a 53 minute show, they do a whole house and you just start troweling. And we've seen on a lot of your fails, your Friday fails, uh, that just disasters, just yeah. like. And just, what I, I think the biggest misnomer is, um, if you, if you just go ahead and get started, you can make it up. I, I know it's not right, but I can use the thin set to fix it here and there. And that is the wrong attitude to have. Cause what you're going to do is you're going to fight the installation the whole way. If you take your time to prep your floor, whether it's with a patch material or self leveling or something like that, your installation is going to go so much better. It's so going to use easier. a, um, a self leveling. How does that work? Self leveling is a great product. Um, if, and, and it's a little scary, but, um, it is a, a mixture of Portland cement and some mystery chemicals. You prime your floor with a glue and you just pour it out on the floor and it self levels. So what it does is after it cures, it gives you a flat floor. And if it's, you know, uh, it, it can give you a level floor, but that is one of the other misnomers too, is that you have to have a level floor for tile. And that's not true. It doesn't have to be level. It just has to be flat. So that concept is hard to grasp for some people because yes. sometimes they do mean one thing saying the other, but what you're, so the first thing that is self-leveling uh, cement or product would give you, let's say, let's change the word, a smooth surface, like no bumps, no holes in it, things like that. Uh, no waves. So, so that flat floor uh, or smooth floor is giving you a nice, clean, smooth mm -hmm. surface area for a thin set or whatever to, to bond to it. But if it's a big area, it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect, right? It could be slightly. Yeah, I mean, the, um, the, the specification for it is an eighth of an inch in 10 feet. So it can be out of level an eighth of an inch every 10 feet. Um, it just, it can't have any vertical rises over a 16th of an inch. So those are kind of the two things when you're going and like that, look at the picture, not the words like this guy is doing here. If I can get my, my thing, look at the picture, not the words, you, you know, when you're walking <laughs> around and this is what you should be doing on your floors right. and walls is right. you should be checking to make sure they're flat. Got it. Because Got it. then yeah. it leads you to adhesive. Now, in in um many we've, we've got an offer for an assistant dan is offered to assist all right bring him on um <laughs> when Look people great so <laughs> oh i love it when people <laughs> say adhesive sometimes they're thinking organic adhesive glue tacky but you mean that in a real technical term like whatever is bonding the bonding agent right yes i t I, I toyed around with how to write this up there because Yes, the technical term for adhesive is just something to stick something to something else, right? right. So, um, and, and that's what I use that. But yes, in the tile industry, when you say adhesive, tile people think of glue. Um, right. And that is an, ex, uh, an acceptable installation uh, product. But the most common is mortar, and that's your thin set mortar, which thin sets almost kind of outdated now too. Now it's a large and heavy tile mortar, right. um, but in all it is, it's a cement uh, aggregate and a lot of glue, and those are those are the two most common. You got a mastic adhesive and your thin set, and thin set probably holds ninety percent of the market. So but you got to choose what's right. Am I correct in saying like the glue out of a can that's tacky is um, like an organic he adhesive? Um, I, no, I lost the term. I wanted to say something. You know, it's like a um, a mixture. It's it's a glue type of material, not a not a thin, not as it's not cementitious, right? It's it's for are you are thinking of mastic? Yeah, mastic. Is yeah, that mastic an organic is adhesive is that is that a term they use? It, it is, um, there are some organic and then there's some non-organic because, you know, wow. for the longest time it was all organic. 
Um, but then there was a lot of mold issues and people were using it in the showers and stuff. So now there are some non-organic mastics out there that you actually can use in um, moist areas, but I don't ever suggest it. I, I right. think in my opinion, thin set is the way to go. It is right. the, um, yeah, but are those mastics gluten-free and um, also fat-free? I think they are yeah. gluten-free. I don't know if they're fat-free. All right. I don't know if they're fat-free. But the, the tricky thing about adhesive is when you go to these big box stores, they've got your palette of the cheapest thing they sell, and then they have a palette of the most expensive thin set in the world. And unfortunately, if you're going in there as a novice, you're you're thinking to yourself there can't be any difference between the two they just want to charge me more for this one and that is not correct there's right. a huge difference between a cheap bag of mortar and an expensive bag of mortar and you need to read the instructions a um, couple of limitations that I'll point out that uh, you you want to note is the size the maximum size of the tile that the thin set is made for because okay. they make thin sets for large tiles and it is critical when you're buying a mortar that it matches and what substrate it's compatible to. I've seen a lot of people buy thin set mortars that can't be installed over plywood and they're doing a home renovation over plywood. Well, in general, plywood is the least desirable, right? Correct. And, and why is that? It, it, unless it's an exterior grade plywood, which is actually a ply, uh, a, a wood veneer plywood, um, most of the time it's OSB or it's some sort of press board. Um, it's, uh, it, it gets damaged by water and mortar, thin set mortar has moisture in it and it, uh, it can deteriorate the board before you even get started. So there are some that are good for it, but it needs to be the proper type of board. But I would, I always suggest if you have a wood substrate, just, um, just put an uncoupling membrane over it, use a strata mat or a Dietra system. And normally that, um, works really well over those wood substrates. And then you don't need the more expensive exterior grade plywood. Check your, uh, check, follow the instructions. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did I spell adhesive right? I did. Well, I did. The funny, I the funny thing is, right. did you ever look at the word like the, and just all of a sudden at that moment, it looks like it's spelled wrong. Like, yeah, you know, well, I do that. I do that every day, John. So every right day. now I have no confidence in, in, in the spelling and I'm looking at it and it looks wrong, but I know it's right. So good job, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the biggest thing about installate tile installations and, and one of the biggest failures is how you put your adhesive on your substrate and your tile. And um, directional troweling is something, uh, thus us in the industry throw that term around a lot. And really it is just how you literally use this trowel to apply and gauge the thin set onto the substrate to put your tile on the mortar. And directional troweling is kind of what it means. It means, as you see there, the ridges are going in one direction. And what happens is when you install that correctly, then the ridges completely collapse and you get, as you see there, this is the back of the tile, 100% coverage on this. It looks like maybe a eight, 12 by 18 tile. And there's no hollow spot on that tile. And that was achieved by using directional troweling. So the troweling technique and how you put your adhesive on your floor or under your tile is very important. And you need to learn about that and figure out how to. Um... Right. But I need a little more clarification. Okay. Because directional doesn't mean just one direction or does it mean two directions does it mean left right up down in circles like you're going in a curve is a direction also going in a curve no it, it, what 
it is intended to do, just like it's shown here, is perpendicular to the tile. And um, okay. and so when you have your ridges going perpendicular to the tile, you lay your tile in the mortar and you push it a little bit one way and a little bit the other way, the air runs out of it. And so there's no air underneath the tile, which therefore you have no hollow spots and Got gives it. you great coverage. Do we have a graphic with the word perpendicular spell? Because I'm a little worried about the next no, slide. Um, oh, okay, but Dan, Dan did say word anesia is the strange phenomenon of blanking the spelling of a common word. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. <laughs> word anesia. <laughs> word no, anesia. So, that's, so, that is helpful. And that's what we have now because there's no confidence in me spelling the word right. <laughs> so what you're saying is if you have a 12 by 24 porcelain floor tile, uh huh, and you you don't, and you want to put the thin set down with the trowel in one direction. You don't want to go on an angle, mm -hmm. and you want to go. Are you going with the length of the product, or does it doesn't matter as long as it's the same throughout? Um, it does matter, but not a lot. Um, right. they okay. want the they want the trials the trial ridges to go perpendicular to the long side so okay. the air has the shortest distance to run out um and that is the right way if you're doing it the other way and sometimes you have to depending on the pattern or the layout um it'll still work uh but just remember coverage that we expect in a dry area is 85 percent or greater and as you saw on that tile it was over a hundred percent and right. um but what you don't want to do is fix your substrate with your thin set and start building up your tile a little bit under this corner, a little bit under that corner. Cause what that does is that creates a lot of air gaps and, uh, or use the five dot method. If you, if you know what that means, you take a oh my God. thin set, put it in each corner, put the tile down and set it and forget it. And it's going to break. Um, set it, forget it. And then you're going to be reminded of it after yeah. not too long when it fails we've seen all those fail videos right where people just take like a little screwdriver hammer just like popping tile off yep and it's, it's amazing and, uh the ones that are set poorly luckily the demo you can make money on demo because they come out um relatively <laughs> easy so um, john i know uh that we, we will take a little break like we get some um some questions in here and sure. uh you you had something you sent over today about is this a new material or a uh, um a, oh so a so my product highlight is a really cool product designed by elizabeth sutton who's going to be a guest on our podcast um i think in october and she's dynamic designer this is a product that is marble made into like an arc pattern and it's fused together and you can and you could do so what's really cool is designed by a designer but it's also meant for another designer to use it on their project and they could customize it so it's, it's what do you what what do i have so the product is designed by a designer for a specific product project no it's it's a it's a product that has multiple colors and multiple directions and then a designer in someone's project needs to take those options and create what they want to do with it so okay. um i think we should go to the videotape because i can't okay. explain it. <laughs> all right let's go to the videotape yes hey it's john tedisco i'm here at tile bar's flagship showroom we have a line from the dynamic elizabeth sutton it's called arc you'll see it on display back here and what you're looking at is a marble in a curve, it has an arch, and you see the white Thassos, the Rosa Levanto, the Norwegian Rose, and the Verde Green in this arc pattern. But it comes in a couple other directions and also comes in other colors. I'll show it to you. So here is the other pattern. It comes just straight, and then the curve has the lines horizontal or lines vertical. But here are the other colors. This is the Sol, here's the Viva, Here's the night, and here's the rainbow. And look at all those patterns you can do. Really cool, check it out. It's on our website. Order samples, there's a lot you can do with this walls, floors, residential and commercial. This is John Tedisco, like 
to wish you a happy, happy hour. Does that John, mean- that was that was a. I, I've seen that. I don't know that I've seen that on a project yet. Have I? I did a hotel in Canada with it uh, not too long ago. It was okay, a. I've uh, never was, been to Canada. No, I, was, I I have been to Canada, but I haven't been to that hotel. Yeah, I it probably was a, can't afford that hotel. Yeah, it was a it was a high end like um, guest suite because exp- it was an expensive uh, project. Uh, yeah, so what's cool about that is you know it's designed by a designer, but you really need a designer to also use it because you need to, <laughs> right. you, need, you need to, if you saw really for like a half a second, that was, we have a booklet that shows and on our website, uh, line drawings of how you can orientate, uh, these, uh, tiles. So really cool. A lot of fun. Um, need a good install. Well, you know, it's a 12 by 12 tile. It, so in a way it, you don't need a great installer for that aspect because it's a 12 by 12, but you need someone who knows how to put down marble, but also you need a good installer because it's not cheap. So you don't want to play around with this. If you have a high end material, Yeah. You, if you're investing in the product, you really need to get, I think a professional to do that particular product, but that was pretty cool. what did you think of it? I, I liked it. I, I mean, it's kind of got those retro, uh, colors which are are hot and popular right now and um at first you know you think it's a mosaic uh it it gives that sort of feel to it um but yeah i'm with you something that expensive you definitely want a qualified installer you can do it yourself but just uh be be aware that it's a high it's a high risk because if you you while mess you're it up. It out, you I mess mean, it up it's it's painful and um yeah so i realized in that video i didn't say at any point like this is a 12 by 12 piece of marble but it's pieces put together into a 12 um, by 12 marble um dan said you did say hey order some samples yeah order some samples now <laughs> all right order. Order. I don't know how you spell order, but I don't order. know how to spell regular English words. Yeah. Um, from my... But yeah, now, John, with that built the way it is, you still treat the finish like a stone, correct? Yeah, it's 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 a marble. It's I mean, it's, marble. it's a marble, even though it's in a 12 by 12. And, and so, yeah, you, you, so it's marble. And the same way. what about the days when you use marble and you, you couldn't use a sanded grout? You had to use an unsanded grout, but things have evolved in the yeah. grout world, haven't they? And it's pretty cool. And look at that. See? Wow. I like how that, that's a good transition. You didn't even know that was coming. That's amazing. Look at that so, picture. I took that picture. Isn't that cool? Really? Um, that's good. But you're right. Uh, grouts have changed so much in even since I got in the industry 20 years ago, 20 years ago, grouts were almost a colorant, which was a pigment of some sort, sand and cement. Or if you didn't have, um, if it was a non-sanded grout, it was just Portland and a colorant. colorant. Um, and now it's progressed so much. There's so many things in grout. The... Um, aggregates even though once you get to a high-end grout the aggregates are not jagged shape you know sand isn't round even though on the beach it's it feels round they're shaped like asteroids and you know they've got jags and this and that and the other i did not know that oh yeah they're they're under a microscope it it looks um dangerous and wow. it is. I was actually having this conversation today with uh, a client of Eli's in DC, and they had picked out a porcelain tile that was kind of had a Mohs scratch resistance of six. Okay. Well, that's kind of borderline being good enough for a commercial application. And the reason is when people walk in and out of a building, they'll have sand on their shoes, and the sand on their shoes pressed into a soft tile, i.e. a marble like you were talking about, you scratch it. Well, this is what grout was made out of back in the day. It was just that sand mixed with color. And so you had to either have a really durable tile and a really wide grout joint, or it would scratch your tile. But now that's not the case. I mean, they still sell that stuff. That's still, and it's the cheap grout that you see. Um, out it used there. to be the standard grout. Now it's the cheap grout. Right. And uh, Jose on TikTok says he used to mix 50% sanded and 50% uh, 
Um, I'd love, you know, to nonsense. I love you think of that. I've always, my whole life, I had uh, tile distribution companies and I had a lot of contractors. And I always got kind of a kick out of it when, you know, the guy's like, I just, I mix this and I mix that. And, but, but whatever, whatever works for them. And I guess when those products are so basic, they can maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe, you know, maneuver the mixtures a little, but now it's probably a little dangerous because you have all different types of ingredients. Yeah. And, and a qualified installer, somebody that's been doing it a really long time, they know their products pretty well, but right. today you're right. I mean, when you get a bag, even the cheapest bag from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever, whatever big box store you like is a lot more technically advanced than it was yeah. 20 years ago. And it is a science experiment. There's so much technology, millions of dollars of research have gone into these things to try to make them indestructible, stronger, easier to use. Right. And yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it is, it, it's, not recommended to do job site mixes. It's recommended to um, use the water that uh, they say on the bag, even though it, if it may not feel right, that's how you get the warranty. That's how you um, you learn your products that way. But if you keep uh, job site mix and add a little bit more water here, a little bit more water there, um, you have the risk of a failure. Well, read the instructions, of course. And there's a product that tile bar carries which is super unique uh called permacolor yeah permacolor is a great product i mean obviously if you've listened to the show you know i'm a big laticrete fan um permacolor permacolor select are um in my opinion the some of the best grouts on the market um but are also the newest grout which is, i say it's new it's not new anymore but spectralock one is a great grout and that's kind of the trending thing now is a pre-mixed grout. And the great thing about those pre-mixed grouts is you can grout, close the bucket up, and you can use it. Uh, it's got a, a six-month shelf life after you've opened the bucket. So that's, um, that's, that's crazy. pretty unique. That really is unique because one of the, you know, grout used to be known as like the weak link in a tile installation. Yeah. And, um, it's evolved a lot and and some of the problems with grout were shade variations like a good quality yeah. grout comp i used to carry a grout company that was made in um the tri-state area new york area and and this was a long time ago i'm talking like 80 late 80s 90s and um they had a, you you would grout and all of a sudden there'd be this little concentrated speck of pigment and then you grout and there's a streak of red yeah and and you know i i think those issues are long gone with most companies but that was a real basic grout right it was just yeah. a pigment and i don't know what caused that but it was obviously it didn't it didn't uh it wasn't broken down enough i guess i'm not sure you know yeah normally um things like that it could have been a bad batch, but also it, you didn't mix it enough or it, what didn't wet out enough, which means right. you probably didn't have enough water. But I remember when these high tech grouts came out, my job site complaints went down 50% immediately because the, the, the color consistency problems. was, was so much better. Well, it's like, there's no solution because if you, if you screw it up, and I don't mean, you know, by your fault, but if something goes wrong and as grout uh, variations in color, the, the resolution, because you, you, you can't just get another bag and say, let me fix it. Because now you have it's mixed at a different time. There's different temperatures, different humidities. You're mixing at a different rate. You know, then you go into grout colorants, but now you have to do the whole floor. So if you can do a tile installation without a grout challenge and without a grout callback, it's almost easier to get a callback like on a chip tile or a broken tile because at least you know you could pop it out. That's right. It you know, it. and put it back in. But grout and it's such it's 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 you know it's not a tile. You can look at a tile and know this is the right color. I'll put it in. But grout, you're, you're mixing it and you're installing it. You don't know what it's going to look like when it dries, when it cures. That, so, I was, I, you're, you're taking the words right out of my mouth. You know, you're yeah. you're installing it wet and it's, you know, three stage darker 
and you don't know exactly how it's going to dry. And yeah, it, it, yeah. grout touch-ups back in the day were terrible. But I will say today, if you're using a grout, it, and if you let me say this to those that are looking for a project, if you're um, to the end of your project and you're choosing your gout, grout, choose an upgraded high performance grout. It doesn't have to be permacolor select. It can be ultra color FA. Um, uh, tech has a product power grout. Those grouts are worth the extra money because of their color consistency. Um, and when you grout one day and uh, have to touch up the next day, you're not going to see that forever. Buy, if you buy the cheapest grout that they sell, you're going to have a hard time. This is true. Hey, you know what? You said something about today, and I want to know about National Day. I want to stump oh, you. A national? Okay. So this is a segment we always do. So if you're new to the channel, get ready for you. Put your thinking cap on. Uh, John likes to, you know, he has doesn't have a lot to do, so he looks I'm at very, the calendar very a lot. Sim very simple. He's very simple. And so we we're talking, <laughs> what is today's national day? It's national something. July right. 4th is Independence Day. We all know that. Yeah. But every day has a national day. So, John, uh, what what did we, uh, somebody knew what this game was called? Two rights and a wrong or? Oh, it? yeah. Oh, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Two, two truths and a lie, I guess, is kind of where it was based two off truth. of. Um, and, two uh, truths and a lie. So you're going to put it up on the screen. Yeah. So let's get that on. I'm going to get that on the screen. Uh, okay. So uh, one question before you ask your question, as everybody gets their thinking caps on, I've got a question from TikTok. What's my opinion on Ultra Color FA? Um, Ultra Color FA is a great grout. Uh, I would suggest if you're using a, if you're putting it on a porous material, stone, a crackled tile, maybe even a heavily um, undulated tile, I would use a grout release. It, it The pigments are, are, are they're, they, they'll, they're small and they'll get stuck in places, but it's a great grout. And when used correctly, stay on top of it. Follow the timing that's written on the bag because if you let it get away from you, you can have a mess on your hands. Ultra Color FA, I, I do like it. Um, so John, national today is today. So you gave me three choices. So today is, is today is ants on a log day, cat in the hat day, and chocolate milkshake day. So oh. two of those are true because I guess when times were simpler, there was only one thing that day. But now times are more complicated. Sure. So there are multiple things today, right? Multiple the things that the day represents. Exactly. I am going to say. And if anybody else has any guests out there on what the national day of the day is. Well, what, um, well, it's the other way around. Which one is not today? Which one is false? Which, yeah, one, which is one is false? false. Two I of them think are hat and the hat day is false. Final okay. answer. Final answer. All right. All right. So uh, Craig is right. It is not cat in the hat day. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I had two foods. So I thought, okay, that what's the odd man out? And that's why I chose Cat in the Hat Day. All right. Okay. Yeah. So um, um, Dan, Dan got it right too, but I think he probably put that in after I said it. <laughs> so I, I Dan, do I think, not get credit. I think um, you would since help. we're, since you we're would on um, uh, talking about that. Another, another question from an actual user an actual client john so here's your chance you ready i'm ready and it fits uh it right right what we're talking about so i'm gonna let me read that it's, it's right here on my screen we have a customer who purchased bright white grout about a year ago and her grout is completely gray now the customer is looking for suggestions on how to make the white grout how to make the white grout again. <laughs> I think she makes make the white grout white again. If there are any clear suggestions that may help, is it necessary to regrout or partially regrout? So this is a common question. And we, I mean, we spent the last 10 minutes talking about this, about uh, grouts and, and how they were. Uh, and this is what happens when you put white grout somewhere over time or, or whatever it's going to become gray which is why i want to 
um, mop water gray grout. That's I'm going to coin that, get that patented. But John, what is your suggestion for this client who had white grout? Now it's gray. They want it white again. What do you do? Any so you want to know how to make white grout great, great again. Say that again. Make, make grout, make white grout great again. Make white grout great again. So if you got a suggestion, all those out there in uh, internet land, um, how do you make bright white grout white again? All right. So scraping out and regrouting would bring a new bright whiteness, but it's going to be temporary, just like the original installation. And it's a right. bit not fun and you know you could you could chip tile it it's so i i'm very not risky not recommending scraping out and regrouting because you're putting the same product back in and it's still it's you know it's like i put white carpet in my kitchen and it's getting stained how do i fix it let's put new white carpet and that's good for a week so uh if you if you must use white grout which a lot of people do uh and and hopefully using a higher quality grout where and if installed properly, you you shouldn't have major issues. Has it been sealed? But my answer is, use a grout colorant. So there uh -huh. are products. So there are products that you can apply to grout that chemically bond. It's not just mm -hmm. uh, just sitting on the tile. They they you're painting it with a fine like little kid's brush because I'm assuming yep. your grout joint isn't craft too brush. wide. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, like a craft uh, brush, and you are applying a new white um, uh, colorant, which which makes it bright white, but it also chemically bonds to the grout that's already there. And then thirdly, it, it actually is sealed because the nature of grout colorants is that they're, 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 they don't stain. So that's yep. my answer. That is the correct answer. Um, and Jose, you're right uh, on TikTok grout colorant so he would he would hose you and jose were on the same page um we got one um tick top grout renew from custom building products i don't i don't know about that one do you know about grout renew i don't i guess feel like i've heard of it uh it, i mean it it may be no it's the not a cleaner thing. it is it is a similar thing i thought it was a click because yeah you could clean it but it's not getting to the root it's not preventing it from happening again. So you yeah. could clean it. You could do what Rick's suggesting to Clorox it. You could. Yeah. You but could, I, uh, like, like you were just saying, the Clorox suggestion from Rick. Thanks, Rick, for tuning in. Good to see you. Missed you over the last few weeks. Um, the Clorox is a temporary solution. It may. Um, all, all it's going to all it really is doing is getting in that grout joint, grout joint and bleaching the dirt that is staining the grout. Right. Um, I, um, I, I'm with you, John. The, the system that I've used is, um, color fast grout colorant and you oh, said it exactly correct. And I'm just going to elaborate on it. The color fast is an epoxy sealant. And the great thing about color fast is they can make it in any color out there. Um, and I've used that. It works really well. It bonds to the grout joint and it, makes the grout joint in a sense like an epoxy grout joint which means it should not stain so question for you can you make a black grout white with that with the grout colorant yes so and so what it's not it's not a stain it's not a grout stain yeah it's like it, it is actually a um it's like nail. It's like a topical solution that chemically bonds. So it's not a stain because because the old fashioned you can go to the mason yard right and buy masonry stain if you want to pigment concrete. So yeah. uh, I think I think I think an old fashioned way of of making uh, fixing a grout issue is someone has a like a beige grout and it's some places it's discolored. You come in with a stain and you stain the whole thing and make it darker, but that's a real crude old fashioned way of doing it. That's like yeah. using muriatic acid, the clean tile, you know, that's like super <laughs> right. old fashioned. Not done anymore. Yeah. Um, so, so it's, it's not a stain and, and especially, especially if you're going from, if you're going from light to, to dark, you may think it's a stain, but, but if you're going 
a black grout's on the floor and you want to make it white, you can do that with a colorant and per- per- yeah. perhaps that grout yeah. renew. Um, you know, well, it looks like our, our Daniel, our uh, in-house AI, said grout renew is a water bring, waterborne acrylic stain or sealer. So I think that is the old version. And I, I've used uh, grout stains before, but I don't think it is equal to the colorant from Colorfast. Um, so Colorfast is a brand, is a it's a product. Colorfast is a company. I don't. Uh, they make caulks, um, and what they do is they make caulks and stains that match all of the major branding companies out there. Um, and we used to use them when we had problems. Right. Does Aquamix still do that? Because they they. I think Aquamix does still do that. Also, I, I've. Uh, yeah. And I think you can buy the aqua mix that matches the mape at Lowe's, but um, yeah, seventeen ninety eight at Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> but the last thing, John, we're running out of time. The last thing that is how can we run critical. out of time? We're just getting started here. I'm having fun. We are just getting started. Um, uh, but it, it's cleaning and maintenance. This uh, this kind of goes together with what we're talking about and what the, the question of the day was. Cleaning and maintenance. <laughs> Please, if you have a white grout, invest in a good grout or invest in a great sealer because it's going to stain. Everything stains. Nothing is 100% stain proof anywhere, anytime. Yeah. Have a cleaning um maintenance program for your installation yeah i have to say that that's where people really fall short Uh, you know forget about natural stone because natural stone brings a whole set of questions Mm -hmm. and and um there there's answers to all those questions but when you're talking about tile and a ceramic or a porcelain or even a glass you know pretty much you don't really it's really a very practical product so it's not like it's screaming it needs something like if you're doing like carpet right or people do a, a granite countertop and don't seal it and they and then their neighbor does a granite countertop and they seal it and they will swear that that sealer is amazing because the granite's not staining but the person who didn't seal it may not may not have a problem either because it happens to be a pretty hard material. The same yeah. is true with a ceramic or a porcelain. If you do nothing, it probably would be okay. But I think the bigger problem is when you do something wrong. Like if you just ra- if you just put a porcelain down or if you put a good uh, grout down that maybe doesn't even need a sealer or doesn't scream that it needs a sealer, but it's when you do the- something wrong, like you clean a floor – I think the mm-hmm. biggest mistake that people use, and you see this in restaurants, you ever go to a restaurant and you walk in with like, you know, rubber so- sole shoes. And I think of a pizzeria in Long Island and literally you're like sliding on the floor. <laughs> like you could twist and do the twist pretty easily. What is and- so funny. We, uh, you know, you know, I was in Nashville this weekend and I meant to have my daughter film this, but the exact opposite of what you were saying is they're cl- they were cleaning the floor, and I guarantee you it's one of these major cleaning companies that have this no rinse cleaner, and uh, your feet would stick to the floor. Every person walking, horrible. it was, and it was terrible. And it was this beautiful marble floor in in the hotel, um, mediocre hotel, <laughs> that, um, and it was so sad. And and it's the same thing. They're cleaning it with the wrong stuff. And uh, and what's crazy is the data is out there. What, yeah. what, no, where you're buying your products from, I guarantee you they have cleaning and maintenance somewhere. Your grout companies have cleaning and maintenance suggestions. There are so many forums. My email is always open. Clean your stuff correctly and don't just listen to if you're a commercial project, don't just listen to your commercial cleaners that are trying to sell you the whatever product that is good for all because well, not well, all that's, is good for all. I agree. That's my that's my I I find people are using the wrong material. I would much rather someone just use super hot water 
uh, and th then using the wrong cleaner. And then if you want to add something, my go-to is clear non-sudsing ammonia. Uh, not much uh, in, in a hot bucket of water. The worst thing that people could use are a lot of products in the supermarket that say tile cleaner. Those are yeah. the worst things you can use uh, because either there's two folds, say oil base, and they leave a residue of film and that residue of film make things slippery yep. or attract dirt or something like like a tile x that has sulfamic acid in it and, mm -hmm. and and they say you could you know clean your tile but don't get it on your mirror don't get it on your sink don't get it on your faucet because it's acid and it's going to etch it so yep. uh yeah when a chemical company is involved in it it's usually a, an issue and i i have so much history with cleaning companies being the worst um Culprits. What's crazy to me, John, and you tell me the, how this logic works. You have a beautiful floor on day one and you have it cleaned for six months and then it looks terrible. It's sticky and it's the tiles fault. I, I don't understand the logic behind that, but that's, the, that is the reality that we live in. And I, as a contractor, you know, I've been called and said, come back and fix this. Your tile won't come clean. Well, right. that's because you hired somebody that's, interested in getting hours cleaning it not learning how to clean in my opinion well also it's job security some of these cleaning companies don't know what they're doing but some know what they're doing and they're doing something that creates a perpetual uh yeah maintenance program so i had somebody who did a porcelain a matte porcelain floor tile and one of the shine to add, add a shine later on after it was installed. He regretted getting a mat. You can't do that. So the cleaning guy's like, no, I could put like this coating on top. And yeah. it looked good like day one and day two and day three. It was a barbershop. And yeah. um, and next thing you know, it started getting like webbed and cracked. And now the guy had to come back every week and reapply it. And that's the reason you get tile. It's supposed to be maintenance free. You know, we're yeah. talking about cleaning, but we're talking about minor maintenance right. this guy added a whole level of a service contract and he had eventually after uh three months he he paid the guy to strip it off and go back to the original product yeah. and yeah. it was sad to see yeah it, it is sad it, and and so if you have questions about how to clean and how to properly maintain your tile ask a tile professional yeah now, I, I i am sure there are plenty of tile cleaning companies out there but uh, these one-stop shop that can clean your um, carpet, your toilets, your mirrors, and your tile floor, double check them. They may be great, but double check them. And um, you know, I know, I know, we're wrapping up. But question: I saw a commercial recently. One of those steam companies that cleans your carpet. And now they clean tile, which they've been mm -hmm. doing for a while. The guys in the yellow trucks, right? Yeah. Uh, they show a guy with a circular kind of cleaner some kind of rotating disc on a tile floor, like a 12 by 12, you know, tile. And they show going over the ground. All of a sudden the grout's getting white. And I'm saying, how the heck are those bristles getting below the surface? They're not. I think it was some, some trickery going on there in the commercial. <laughs> uh, yeah. Who knows? I mean, uh, those stiff bristled, stiff bristled pads for a rotating head are work really well when you have the right chemical on the floor because the trick to cleaning tile is you got to find the right chemical to cut the stain and that could be a couple of different things but once you find that you agitate it let it work agitate it again and here's where the people fail you got to get it off the floor so you have to extract it with a vacuum immediately mop it with um with clean water and and get that off because what happens if you don't do that it just settles back down and it's, well, here, it's there again. Here's an analogy. You have a dirty window. You spray Windex on it. It all of a sudden emulsifies the dirt. And then you do nothing and it's sunny out. And the sun dries the, the moisture off. And then the dirt resettles back on the glass. I love all these questions. Dan, our, t our resident AI asks, what's the best cleaner for the shower? John, do you have a favorite? I don't have a favorite. Um, I don't like things that have acid in it. So, mm -hmm. I, yeah, so I do have a favorite, I guess. It would be a um, pH neutral tile cleaner 
yeah. that you buy concentrated and you get a spray bottle, plastic spray bottle from CVS or Walgreens or Amazon. You fill it up to three, two thirds with water or more. You put a cap full of two of a pH balance, not acid or not alkaline. And you put a cap or two in that. You shake it up. You get a magic marker, your right tile cleaner. And that's what you use every day. So I didn't realize I had a favorite, but now I realize I did. That's, my favorite is what well, we we sell it on our website. It's called Revitalizer. But Dan, I mean, he oh, wait, we don't in. make we don't make money on uh, on the yeah, we don't make money on that. But go I'm buy a truckload of it. Um, but Dan says the favorite cleaner for his shower is the wife. Is the oh he's looking for trouble <laughs> so, politically. Before I get in trouble with Liz Shelton, <laughs> um, let, let's close up the show. This, I tell you, this has been one of my favorite shows because I love installations. I love talking about uh, tile installations. I like troubleshooting it. Did you like it, everybody out there? Um, I, I, we didn't get a ton of questions um, up front. But we did get some good talking points. I think all those guys that are on TikTok right now, Jose and the other ones that are hanging out with us, thanks for chiming in. Um, this is the Tile Happy Hour. Next week, we're going to talk about something else in the ceramic tile industry. But until then, I want you to keep learning together and tile the world. John? Yeah, this is John Tedisco. I'd like to wish everybody peace, health, and happiness. Thank you.